Welcome to the meeting of the San Francisco Public Library Commission for April 20th, 2023. The time is 4.30. I'm Margot Schaub and I serve as a Library Com Commission Affairs Analyst. This meeting is being held in person in the main library correct auditorium and available to view or listen to on WebEx. Members of the public can observe the meeting using the WebEx system by following the link in the library's event calendar or by calling 415 655-0001 and entering access code 2599-854-1547. Public comment will be taken both in person and remotely by video or call-in for each item on the agenda. We will conduct public comment with attendees in the correct first and then move to WebEx for public comment. Each comment is limited to three minutes unless otherwise noted. To make public comment when connected by phone, Please raise your hand by dialing star three to be added to the remote queue for the agenda item you intend to comment on. Individuals joining by WebEx should click the raise hand button to be added to the queue. Mike Smith with Media Service Operations will moderate WebEx virtual public comment. Mr. Smith will call upon WebEx attendees by name or by caller number to prompt each attendee who wishes to provide public comment. If we experience any technical issues with WebEx, we will recess and try to address the issue. Please try logging back into WebEx if there are technical problems. Library commissioners in attendance are President Connie Wolf, Vice President Pete Wong, Commissioners Ono, Maul, and Bolander. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the April 20th, 2023 meeting of the San Francisco Public Library Commission. Time seems to be flying by. Um, to those of us here in Corret Auditorium, we're delighted that you could be with us today. And we are also very pleased to welcome our virtual audience verse via the WebEx platform. We have a very full meeting ahead, and we will start with the Ramatush Ohlone land acknowledgement. The area now known as San Francisco is the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone peoples of the San Francisco Peninsula. As the original peoples of this land, the Ramatush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place. We recognize that we benefit from living, working, and learning on their traditional homeland. As uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatush community. If you have not already done so, all of the materials for this meeting are available for download on the Library Commission page of the library's website, sfpl.org. Today we have a total of six agenda items, and we will begin with um, agenda item number one, which is general public comment. Um, we will start with general public comment from members of the public present here in the Karat Auditorium, and then take public comment from members of the public observing or listening via WebEx. General public comment is now open here in Karat Auditorium. Seeing that there is no public comment here in Karat Auditorium, we will now move to public comment via WebEx. Members of the public who wish to make comment via public uh, public comment via WebEx, please press the star three to line up to speak or press the raise hand button. Operations, if there are any commenters in the remote queue, please begin to put the commenters through. Madam President, at this time, we have two commenters in the queue. I will begin to put them through now. Caller Glenn, your three minutes begin now. Thank you for having me uh, be present today. I wanted to mention the, a number of things that I uh, have discovered in the last in the last month, and that is that there is an interest in the IT Bookman uh, Neighborhood uh, Center, uh, which is uh, presently under uh, renovation. Um, there is an interest in the connection between a private and public. Uh, cooperation between the IT Bookman Center and a public library. Um, it is right across the street from the existing library. And, uh, and it would be a wonderful location. I think uh, the land would be uh, some, you know, somewhat reasonable. You know, I'm, I don't know what the uh, arrangement could possibly be, but uh, Dr. Uh, Pierre 
uh, does show interest in that, and he is the uh, the pastor that's present there. Uh, another thing that uh, I heard, and this is strictly a rumor, and and forgive me for <laughs> for or having uh, rumors to be able to uh, share with you, that uh, London uh, Mayor uh, London Breed is not interested in the library at this time because uh, Asha Safai is considering running for mayor, and should he run for mayor. Um, he would gain all the all the votes in District 11, and uh, and could possibly uh, win an election from her. And so, as I understand it, um, the mayor does not have the support of uh, the library at this time. And that's the end of my comment. And thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Gl caller Glenn. Caller number four, your three minutes begin now. Hello, this is Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association, Library Users 2004 at yahoo.com and P.O. Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 94117-0544. A uh, couple of points. The library continues to provide information about its programs in equitably and provides actual access to its programs that is inequitable. This is wrong and should be remedied. The library favors electronic notification about the existence of programs while not providing the same information to those without easy or any computer access from home, neither by mailing nor by posting things in library branches on an equal basis. Many worthwhile programs have been and continue to be available only online with no publicity reaching folks who walk into a library location and don't sign on to a computer. And the library doesn't tell even those with computer access that they could participate via telephone, including older landlines. That Zoom, for example, does not require a computer for participation. This disproportionately affects the ability to enjoy library services unequally, negatively affecting minorities, poorer folks, older people, very much disabled people, and those not fluent in English. Second, the scandals and toxicity of social media, including Facebook and more recently Twitter, are gaining more and more publicity. Uh, Twitter's rocket ship just exploded today, unfortunately. Yet the library continues to tout them, essentially acting as a recruiter. Uh, it's fine if somebody asks a question about those things, but not as a regular thing all over publicity. For example, this month at the library has two boxes that say Get Social and two more occurrences showing the logos and all of them showing the logos of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. Uh, the library should not be a recruiter for toxic social media and, in fact, any social media, uh, which is just making more money for billionaires and is not necessarily any quality uh, material within there, and certainly nothing that the library has routinely reviewed. Uh, routine matters that the library are not being attended to. The library, for example, doesn't seem able to print a home page uh, of the library or any other screen image. Uh, just seems to be impossible to get that image out to the public for the public when you ask or ask how to do it. The printer copier continues to have serious privacy issues. Everybody can see what you're copying from, for example, the the uh, the copiers. Um, and there are also uh, there's a serious degradation of the offerings of paper sizes. No 11 by 17 any longer. That's really a degradation of service from before. So. Your three minutes are up, caller number four. Thank you. Madam President, there are no additional callers in the queue at this time. Discussion on this item. Um, we will begin with public comment here in Correct Auditorium from the public here and then move to those participating via WebEx. Public comment is now open here in Correct regarding item number two 
the um, review and um, the commission meeting minutes from the March meeting. Seeing that there is no public comment here in correct, I turn to operations. Operations, if there are any callers in the queue, could you please put them forward? Thank you. Madam President, there is one caller in the queue at this time. I will put them through now. Caller number four, your three minutes begin now. Uh, yes, this is Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association, Library Users 2004 at yahoo.com and PO Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 94117-0544. Can you hear me okay? I'm not aware of any problems, but also not that anybody can hear anything. Is it okay? Can you hear me okay? Hello? Hello? Yes. Thank you. Um, the minutes of March 16, 2023, once again, censor important information regarding the meeting and public comments. First, the minutes should once again include, and not yet again censor, my comments about Facebook's toxicity to the public, especially kids. Facebook is toxic. The library should not be touting it and recruiting users in its many publications, including that monthly at the library. Francis Haugen testified to the Senate about this on October 2021. Facebook prioritizes profits over safety of its users. This and other Facebook problems have been widely covered. And I have said this over and over again, and you have left that completely out from your rendition of my comments. Second, I give the name of our organization, my role, and both email address and P.O. Box every time I speak so that people may know how to reach us if they wish. But you now, in the current March minutes, give the email only once and the P.O. Box not at all. All of our identifying information should be provided whenever we say it, and I ask you to put it in. Third, the March 2023 minutes do not include and should include an important comment I made in March that the February minutes should include a significant exchange between Commissioner Susan Mall and City Librarian Michael Lambert. She asked him to consider providing the public with listening devices like earphones on request. She asked twice, and he was noncommittal twice, mentioning something like sanitary issues. This is something we've been requesting to greatly improve access for everyone who comes to the library, and we very much appreciate the commissioner's strong endorsement of that idea. Fourth, the Sunshine Ordinance Task Force had determ has determined that emails and email addresses used for public business should be publicly accessible, and the library administration has refused to provide those to us when we've asked. I hereby ask each commissioner to send us the email address you use to do library business. And additionally, if you like any other way, you may care or prefer to be reached directly without the intervention of any other. Thank you, caller number four. Your three minutes are up. Madam President, there are no further callers in the queue at this time. Thank you very much, operations. Um, thank you for our comments. Um, Seeing that there's no further public comment on item agenda item number two here in Coret or via participants on WebEx, public comment on this item is now closed. I now turn to um, uh, discussion and possible action on this item to our my fellow commissioners. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the March commission meeting? So moved. Oh, do we have a second? I second. So we have a motion from Commissioner Huang and a second from Commissioner Mall to approve the March meeting minutes. And I'll take the roll call. Commissioners, please say aye or no when I call your name. President Wolf. Aye. Vice President Wong. Aye. Commissioner Ono. Aye. Commissioner Mall. Aye. Commissioner Bolander. Aye. The motion is uh, unanimously passed. We now turn to item number three. Um, uh, we are delighted to have featured on today's agenda a discussion about the jail and reentry services program. We very much look forward to this, and I turn the meeting over first to City Librarian Michael Lambert. Thank you. 
Thank you, President Wolf. Good evening, library commissioners. Library staff appreciates this opportunity to present some updates on the enhanced level of service that we're delivering at for our justice involved population in the county jails. Um, I'm extremely grateful for our partners from the Sheriff's Department and the Office of the Treasurer and Tax Collector, the San Francisco Financial Justice Project for also joining us this evening. Uh, and you're going to hear from them directly a little bit later, but at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Rachel Kennan, who is the manager of our jail and reentry services. And also we have Dr. Jeannie Austin and B. Akello on staff here joining. They're going to be co-presenting with Rachel and helping to introduce our esteemed guest. Rachel. Thank you, Michael. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, in the past, we have presented to the Library Commission about our local, about our local um, jail library services, our reference by mail program, and our reentry and outreach programs. All of this local work, which continues, led to national networking with other librarians and laid a path for us to receive a $2 million grant from the Mellon Foundation to expand and increase library services to incarcerated people around the United States. For this meeting, I'll give a brief look at our ongoing local work. Then Jeannie Austin and B. Okello will share an update about our Mellon funded grant activities. I'll close with a look at two special projects we've been working on with local partners, which we hope will serve as models for other library systems. And then as Michael said, we'll invite our collaborators to join us to comment on the work and the exciting projects we've done together. San Francisco public librarians work inside each of the two county jails every week. In addition to our regular service, Circulating Books, our librarian Jeannie Austin facilitates a weekly program for trans and gender nonconforming patrons inside the jail. In fact, Jeannie was just facilitating that program as this meeting was getting started, which is why they ran in uh, just a few minutes ago. So I'm really happy Jeannie was able to both keep their program going and join us here today. These images show our book truck that we bring around to the pods in the jail, as well as our book storage room inside County Jail Number 2. Incidentally, that center photo was taken by a Chronicle photographer for an article the Chronicle ran on our program in March 2022. The third photo shows the Juvenile Justice Center Library. These days, there are usually fewer than 20 youth at Juvenile Hall, and they can come into the library with staff or teachers at any time, and then I am there to be their librarian every three weeks. Reference by mail continues to be an incredibly important service. Incarcerated people have little to no internet access or other ways to retrieve reliable, authoritative information. Our program has responded to over 13,000 information requests in the last five years. Most of those responses are researched and written by our master's level library school interns, as well as by San Francisco public librarians. In the past few years, as our patron base in the Western United States grew, we connected with library systems in other states so that the work could be distributed and patrons could connect with their local libraries. In addition, a few years ago, we helped Sacramento Public Library create their own reference by mail program. So we now respond to some of the California facilities and Sacramento responds to patrons at other prison facilities in the state. This reentry resources brochure is available both in the jails and in all public library locations. We're always very happy to direct our patrons to visit the bridge at Maine as their first stop to learn more about the library's resources. And we always know they're in good hands when they stop by the bridge. In fact, thanks to the efforts of staff at the bridge, the library now hosts monthly packed meetings for people who were just paroled to San Francisco. These PACT meetings, which stands for Parole and Community Teams, are run by the CDCR prison system, and they are an opportunity for community organizations, including SFPL, to share our resources with people who recently paroled. And now that we're hosting the meetings, we're able to make sure that every attendee leaves the meeting with their library card. We conduct outreach throughout the year in a variety of ways. Thanks to SFPL's longstanding partnership with the National Park Service, our patrons' testimonials about the value of books and libraries were actually on display on Alcatraz Island. This picture shows me standing next to the exhibit, which was curated by an NPS ranger. The white cards next to me show testimonials about libraries. 
some of them the words of people incarcerated in the county jails, and some of them formerly incarcerated at Alcatraz itself. We also table at reentry resource fairs, like the one shown here at County Jail 3, that's Sheriff Miyamoto talking with us at our outreach table, and we will be participating in a resource fair at San Quentin State Prison in May. Now I'll turn it to Dr. Jeannie Austin and B. Okello to share updates on our Mellon Grant activities. Thank you, Rachel. When we started our program, we were really looking for models of library services that we could replicate where things had worked well and what we could bring into our system and build from. And what we found was that there wasn't that much that was publicly available. So now, thanks to the Mellon Foundation and their generous $2 million grant to the library, we are working to expand information access for incarcerated people, in part by identifying where library services exist. We are creating a digital map, which Bio Kello will be talking about in just a moment, that shows where library services are and where they could be expanded. Um, as we began this project, we worked with City Fellow Angel Castro and a fellow at PEN America, Emma Stammen, to call prisons all across the United States to figure out if they even had a prison librarian. That's how little is known. Now we're able to build a resource where people can find library systems that are like the ones that they work at or have similar budgets and begin to duplicate some of the projects that already exist. We're also developing professional tools that can be utilized all across the country through a virtual training series that's all recorded. It will be online at, on the SFPL's YouTube and the Jail and Reentry Services playlist and also available through the American Library Association's learning management system because we know for some people they're not allowed to take time off desk for training unless they get a certificate. Thanks to the grant, all of those certificates will be free and plentiful. The American Library Association is actually a subgrantee with us on this project. They're currently about to publish a new version of the library standards for people who are incarcerated. The last version of that published by ALA for adults was published in 1992. For juveniles was 1999. It's a long time ago. And they're working on some really cutting edge research around the digital literacy needs of people who have experienced incarceration. As I said, we called prisons and asked if they had a librarian. And um, we also worked with Chelsea Jordan Makeley, who's a researcher in this field and in charge of library services for the justice involved and with the Colorado State Library's Library Research Service to create a survey to figure out what public libraries were doing. And this is an image of an article that we published with some of those findings. When we began doing this research, we found about 50 public libraries that were providing any kind of service, including donated books to incarcerated people. In the course of this research over the last year and a half, we've moved up to about 100 that we know of. So we're slowly bringing those into the map, which will help us find one another in the work. Um, we're also, we also, through that work of identifying library services, we're able to bring together about 60 librarians and information workers in this field for an in-person convening and 30 for a virtual convening in June of 2022. That happened right before the American Library Association uh, annual, and annual conference is what it's called. Sorry, my brain is a little still in the group. Um, and it's the first time, as far as we know, that that many of us in the work had been in a room together. It was really exciting and really generative. And we actually have enough money left in our budget to hold a second convening this year. So right now we have about 80 confirmed attendees for June. This is um, a very preliminary prototype version of the map that we're developing. This was a paper map we had available at the convening and each little book is an image for library services. So this helps you to see where services are abundant and where they're really lacking. And our goal with the work that we're doing at the grant is to get services present in every state. After we had our in-person convening in the morning of June 22nd on uh, 2022, ALA held a large public forum around library service for incarceration for people who are incarcerated. Tracy D. Hall, the executive director of the American Library Association, is really advocating for this to be part of the work that all public libraries are doing. So here you can see an illustration from a graphic artist who created this beautiful artistic mural out of the topics that came up during that convening in which stakeholders, formerly incarcerated people, and people at the forefront of this work all came together to talk about what we've done and what can be done. At the American Library Association, Tracy D. Hall also moderated a main stage event where I spoke, our colleague Enrique Rivera, who works for Multnomah Public Library, spoke, and formerly incarcerated artists, thinkers, and leaders, Reginald Dwayne Betts and, Enrique, and Randall Horton also presented. 
So I'm going to turn it over to B to show you some of the amazing work we're doing with this. Oh, sorry, B. Interactive map. Hello, everyone. My name is B. Okello. Aspr SFPL was awarded the Mellon Grant. I was hired onto the team last year as an administrative and GIS analyst. I was previously working as an SF fellow in the city controller's office, city performance division. Um, and I do apologize. Oh no, our visual is working. So if you look at the slide above, or if you're at home looking at the slides available, you'll see that there's an animated GIF displaying our new interactive map, which as the team has stated is meant to show um, our current state, as well as the progress we have in advancing library services and information services for incarcerated individuals. Um, as you will see in the map, there are a variety of interactive functions that will be um, covering statistics of various natures that we've been collecting over the last several months. Statistics including total people incarcerated by state, incarceration rates per thousand individuals, and also information on incarcerated, incarceration spending by state. This map is built using the ArcGIS platform, which is incorporated into other city programs such as Clean Streets, theme parks and COVID bat seeing tracking. Um, and um, when users interact with the map, they'll be able to click on various spots to open up pop-ups and see other more detailed um, visuals explaining what's going on in each state um, regarding library services for incarcerated individuals. And this map is meant to be a continuously evolving project. As we move forward in the grant, we are collecting information on topics such as books to prisoners programs, which you can see in the slide above. This current slide covers the location of all these programs across the state and also lets you know which programs serve which areas in the country. We're hoping to continue research on other services, including um, surveying librarians within carceral institutions. We will also be looking at staffing levels and state policies in regards to carceral libraries and um, mailing reading materials into, inside the institutions. With that, I will pass it on to Rachel to talk about some of our local projects and partnerships. Thank you, B and Jeannie. Um, our grant is massive, and I hope that that overview um, piqued your interest and you can always check in with us um, or look at the, we have a page on the SFPL website that can give you a little bit more information or if you wanna digest some of it um, in writing, we're happy to help you um, learn more about the grant if you're interested. Um, so I am so excited now to tell you about some recent projects that the library has been working on with our partners in the Treasurer's Office Financial Justice Project, the Jail Justice Coalition, and the San Francisco Sheriff's Office. County Jail 2 has a brand new family visiting room, which um, is made colorful and cozy with a beautiful mural and furnishings, as you can see in this photo. These images are from an opening ceremony last month. Um, and they, it was attended, as you can see, by San Francisco's sheriff, the city treasurer, and the city librarian. And the muralist, William Palmer, is next to city librarian Michael Lambert in that fabulous brown fur coat. So he's responsible for the beautiful bumblebee mural all around the room. The library uh, purchased many of the furnishings that you can see there, along with a collection of books for children to read during their visits with their parents. Highlights of that collection include the new picture book written by Human Rights Commission Director Dr. Cheryl Davis, and fun conversation starter books like Guinness Book of World Records and Would You Rather, all of which are intended to facilitate playful, special time between incarcerated parents and their children during family visits. The second project I want to highlight today is a groundbreaking initiative to provide free tablets with free resources on them to people in our county jails. In the coming weeks, the Sheriff's Office is going to be sharing more information about this amazing new program, but until then, I'm excited to tell you about the library's role in providing free content on these tablets. First, though, as background, it's important to know that typically when tablets are offered to incarcerated people, they are prohibitively expensive. Sometimes the tablet itself is inexpensive or even free, but then the content and, and functionality like emails, books, games, music are too expensive for most people to use. 
For example, in the California prison system, incoming and outgoing emails start at five cents each. A music streaming service is at least $8 a month. And audiobook services are almost $6 a month. Considering that incarcerated people earn only cents for each hour they may work in their prison job, and many do not have connections outside of the prison to put money on their commissary accounts, use of the tablets can easily become too expensive or can become a significant burden to family and friends on the outside. Additionally, throughout the U.S., most tablets are provided through two major corporations that are making vast amounts of money from their prison contracts. Now it's different here, though. The new tablets in the San Francisco jails are free, thanks to the shared commitment of our partners at the Financial Justice Project and within the Sheriff's Office. And all of the resources and content on the tablets are free. SFPL is proud to have worked closely with our partners at Hoopla, a library vendor, to develop a system by which incarcerated people in our county jails can use Hoopla to access ebooks, audiobooks, mu movies, music, and TV shows on their tablets. This is unprecedented, but we know of library systems around the country who have been trying to create similar programs. It's our hope that as word spreads of our success in San Francisco, other jail and prison systems will work with their public libraries to follow suit. The image on the left there is one of the actual jail tablets with the Hoopla homepage on it. And the image on the right shows that music, streaming music, was very popular during the first couple of months the tablets were introduced earlier this year. We continue to see that music and movies are the most borrowed formats, followed by TV episodes, ebooks, and audiobooks. Through Hoopla and SFPL, patrons are reading and listening to books and other media in addition to continuing to borrow print books from us when we make our regular visits. Both of these projects have been possible because of the Sheriff's holistic approach to developing programs. We are beyond grateful that the Sheriff's Office and the Financial Justice Project have included the library in these life-changing projects. So now I'd like to invite our partners to come up and, and say a few words about our collaborations. Hi, um, I'm Allie Riker. I'm the Director of Programs for the San Francisco Sheriff's Office. Thanks so much for having me here. It's such a pleasure just to, to talk about how much we love the library. <laughs> so um, thank you. Um, and if you're wondering why you haven't heard more about the tablet project before, we are planning on doing a press release in the coming weeks in collaboration with the library. We've just um, wanted to get the tablets in more people's hands inside. We've been deploying them for the last several months and they just got to County Jail 2 last week. So um, we're excited and we're looking forward to, to working on that press release. Um, the tablets are a super exciting um, project and the incarcerated library patrons really, really love them. They've already logged in over 7,000 hours on Hoopla. Um, so it's very, very popular. Um, but I also want to just be able to use my my minute here to to share um, how important the partnership with the library has been these past five years. Before 2018, we relied on donations um, in the jail for our, our incarcerated readers. And um, since 2018, they've people have been able to get you know, the books that they want to read <laughs> in the language that's their first language. And it's it's just been huge. But even beyond the having the high um, interest books has been um, the, I, mean, I can get emotional when I talk about Rachel and Jeannie, <laughs> um, but it is how special having the librarians in is that the contact that the librarians have brought to the, the folks inside the jails. It really should be a national model and it should be what's being done in every carceral setting across the country. And I'm just so grateful that they got this grant and that they are going to try to, you know, make, make the change across the country because it, it really is amazing. Um, it's, it's, um, you know, the COVID pandemic really showed us how important per personal contact is and um, that the librarians are just so amazing. And when we started to open back up, they were the first ones knocking on our doors to come back in. And they were the sheriff's priority to get back in more than anything else. We needed to have our librarians in, in the jails getting the books to people. Um, 
So, you know, they, they do so much from donating books to the children of incarcerated parents to arranging for guest speakers, which Dr. Austin did this afternoon <laughs> um, for, you know, the, the children's room. They really have been amazing and are an integral part of the um, programs inside the jail. So on behalf of Sheriff Miyamoto and the Sheriff's Office, just thank you so much, um, Mr. Lambert and the rest of the commissioners for, for making this program possible. Um, good evening, commissioners. My name is Michelle Lau, and I'm the senior manager of the Financial Justice Project in the Treasurer's Office. Um, thank you for inviting us to speak today. Um, just a little bit about our team. We were set up about six years ago to take a hard look at fines and fees that have a disproportionate impact on people with low incomes and communities of color in San Francisco. Um, we work very closely with other departments like the library, like the sheriff's office, as well as community groups to implement various fine and fee discounts across the city for people with low incomes and people experiencing homelessness. Um, our partnership with the library actually goes back many years ago um, to when we worked with the library to eliminate overdue library fines, um, which disproportionately impacted low income communities um, in our city. We're really proud of this work and the positive impact that we've seen um, following the elimination of overdue library fines. Um, the library has been such a leader in this space and a pioneer. Um, since San Francisco eliminated overdue fines, hundreds and hundreds of libraries across the country have done the same. And we hear all the time from other places around the country. Um, I just wanted to echo everything that Ali and Rachel have said about our partnership with the library and the sheriff's office. Um, the tablet is truly a new model. It's a first in the nation partnership between the library and the sheriff's office to provide resources on the tablet that are actually free. Um, as Rachel described, tablets are typically used in other places to generate money off of incarcerated people and their families. Um, Everything from five cents to send a message to receive a message, a few dollars to read a book or to listen to music. Um, and in San Francisco and under the sheriff's leadership, we've committed to ensuring that money is not a barrier to people communicating with their families or accessing important resources while they're incarcerated. And all of the research shows that um, ins that ensures stronger reentry outcomes and community safety. Um, we're also really proud of our partnership to redesign the visiting room um, and to ensure a family friendly space and to take steps towards ending intergeneral intergenerational incarceration. It was a really wonderful collaboration between community groups and the city. Um, so thank you again to the library um, for your consistent partnership and just on behalf of um, Treasurer Cisneros and the Treasurer's office, um, just thank you and we're looking forward to continuing to work together. Thank you, Allie and Michelle. Um, I guess you can tell we're all really happy with the work that we get to do together, and it really is meaningful to all of us who are involved in it. So I just want to thank you all for your time and for the library's support of our program. We're always really excited to share the work that we're doing. And in the spirit of our Mellon grant, we're also happy to share the important work being done by other libraries in our field, like this slide from one of our Mellon-funded trainings. And we're hoping to provide models for how libraries can better support their incarcerated patrons around the country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel, Dr. Alston, B, our wonderful partners, uh, Ali and Michelle. Thank you so much for your presentation. And Rachel, I want to share this testimonial that you forwarded recently because I, I think it just is a snapshot of the impact of the work that all of you are doing. So this is an email from a justice involved uh, patron that used to be in the county jail. Hello, Rachel. My name is Darius. I'm a product of you bringing books to the San Bruno County Jail. Upon my release, I not only got my life together, started a business. I have written and self-published a book. Thank you for all the self-help books you brought to spark a change in my life. I have a copy for you. Best regards. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was uh, really an outstanding presentation. So much depth and um, complexity to what you address every day and just so grateful for all that you've done. I know there will be um, 
some questions coming up, but we're first going to turn to public comment on this item. So um, we're going to open public comment here in Coret Auditorium, and then we'll move to public comment from those participating via WebEx. So public comment is now open here in Coret Auditorium. Seeing that there is no public uh, request for public comment here in Coret, we will move to um, operations. We'll move to anyone who may be in the queue um, via WebEx. Thank you. Madam President, we have one caller in the queue. I will put them through now. Caller number four, your three minutes begin now. Yes. Um, yes, this is Peter Warfield, Executive Director, Library Users Association, Library Users 2004 at Yahoo.com and P.O. Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 94117-0544. So first of all, thank you very much for this presentation uh, and the materials related and so on. Uh, above all, I think it's important and valuable to uh, basically treat uh, everyone like a human being with respect and appreciation for what they can, uh, well, for themselves. Um, I did have some questions with regard to um, the presentation, and I would say uh, addressing the presenters, which it's a little late for, but to the chair in particular, it would be really helpful when you do make a presentation. There are some of us on the phone. It would be helpful to refer to the name of the page or the page itself. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, reference by ma mail uh, and and with respect to the tablets and so on. I'm glad that the we we generally in the library world understand barriers to access. Even any amount of cost can be a barrier to access, and certainly an unapproachable, an unreachable barrier can happen uh, for folks in jail. Uh, on my page 14, which I don't know if that's yours, there's a picture of the young lady next to empty bookcases and a steam heat thing. On the top left, there's a sign, all empty bookcases, oddly. And the top sign says, the importance of books then and now. I wish I could see the others, but I'm wondering what that display was about and what some of the other signs might have said. Um, I'm wondering who pays for the postage, uh, I think I said, uh, with mailed uh with the mailed program, because even again, small sums can be a big barrier. So I'm wondering, I see machine stamped envelopes. So I'm assuming that there is some kind of provision, but I, I'm curious if that's paid by the prison or the who's paying for that. Um, I was hoping to find a legend for the um, map, the interactive map, which of course I can't see by telephone, but. The page itself doesn't seem to have a legend with regard to those various books and other symbols popping around on the uh, on the map. Um, I did want to say that um, I hope you do better on this than with the fines. We had a real problem that the fines uh, program uh, and survey and so on only affected fines and did not talk about fees, such as for lost books. And the original library intention was to just go forward with no fines. We campaigned and very quickly got approval for no fines also on the books being relieved for those who had them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Caller number four, your three minutes are up. Madam President, there are no other callers in the queue at this time. Um, uh, operations, seeing that there are no further comments, public comments here on uh, agenda number three here in Coret or via WebEx, public comment is now closed. And um, we happily open this up for commission comments and discussion. Um, and I know um, uh, Rachel, Jeannie, and B are all here available to answer any questions. Also just want to acknowledge Allie and Michelle in case any questions for our um, partners. So, um, Commissioner Maul, would you like to make some comments? Thank you for your presentation, and especially after the One City, One Book Committee um, chose Ear Hustle last year. I personally um, was very moved by that book and very moved by the conversations um, or the descriptions by the parents about their children and the families visiting. So I wonder 
Is there um, a direct, is there any correlation or can you not tell between recidivism and the amount of books that someone checks out? Uh, I think generally there has been research done on educational opportunities while people are incarcerated and um, and recidivism rates. I don't know specifically about books. One of the things that we um, hold very dear is we we are thrilled as always when people read books in order to you know um, improve themselves, Im learn different lessons, and you know make changes in their lives. And we also really value people reading for pleasure when they're inside the jails. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all, we all can get lost in a book or we can learn for ourselves from a book. And, um, so we, we haven't found a way to do that kind of sort of research locally, but, um, certainly there have been, there has been, there have been studies about civilian contact and education and other positive programmings in the jail, helping people make different choices in the, in the future. Well, that one letter that um, city librarian Lambert read was very moving. Mm -hmm. And I hope that that's the result of more of that is the result of your work. So thank you. Any other further, um, uh, Commissioner Lopez. Hi, um, I apologize. I came towards the end of the presentation. Um, I have a question regarding the tablets and just, um, I know that it's a pilot and um, so how will the checkout works? What is the time frame that the the person could keep the tablet? Um, and if you can elaborate a little bit about that or is it, you know, like, is it uh, they go to a place, they use the tablet for a certain period or can you, just, thank you. So they're um, distributed every day in the housing units, and they're going to be throughout all of the jail. We're, like I said, we're we're still working on deploying them, but they get them every morning. And then there's um, we have a count <laughs> count time at two o'clock, and so they put bring them back and they charge them. And then after count, they get them again, and then they return them in the evening. So all day, they have access to the tablets. Thank you so much. I was just curious too. Any other further comment? Um, seeing no further comment up here, I'll just conclude by saying that, um, you know, great partnerships only really happen because everyone involved is committed. So it's like the library could want to do anything they wanted in the, in the jail system, but to have the partnership that we have um, with the treasurer's office and with the sheriff's office is what really makes this project really shine. So I want to thank you all for your incredible work together to have a kind of a vision, a sense of value to bring to the incarcerated and making sure they have access to ideas and information and learning. Um, I just also want to just comment on how great it is that you're doing a kind of, you're on two paths simultaneously intersecting. One is to just make San Francisco the model for what can happen around the country. And secondly, to be involved with the Mellon project to really show the country what's available in every community and to share that knowledge. It's really an extraordinary opportunity to really transform how the incarcerated have access to information and materials it really is um, an incredible platform. So I just want to thank you for your incredible dedication, your time, your effort to really um, focus on a population that is often neglected, and yet they um, uh, and and yet for reentry, it's so important. And especially as Commissioner Mall said, the families um, that support them. So just thank you so much for everything that you do. We're so so Ooh. grateful. I have another question. Okay, one later? more question. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, now you just made me forget my question. <laughs> um, okay, never mind. <laughs> there, you can always reach out to them at another point. So um, just again, thank you. Thank you for, for all of that. Such a good question. Given um, uh, 
Uh, so we're com completed with item number three, and we're going to just uh, shift the agenda very um, quickly here and go to the city librarian's report and come back to the facilities report. Um, so um, before turning this over to city librarian Michael Lambert, um, I would just like to say on behalf of the commissioners, we would like to acknowledge that city librarian Michael Lambert has recent be, recently been elected to be the president of the um, PLA, which is the Public Libraries Association. Um, this is, it's a three year term. He'll begin in June as the president elect, then serve as the president and then be the past president. Um, but what this really um, symbolizes is that Michael is a leader in the field. He's recognized by his peers. Um, he brings incredible leadership values and um, excitement and new paradigms of thinking about why libraries matter in public communities. And so we just acknowledge your incredible history, the amount of work you've already done, and know that you're going to bring so much um, uh, integrity and vision to what will happen around this country. So we could not be prouder and we could not be more excited for what you will bring to the United States Public Library Association, but also what you'll bring back to us. So congratulations. Oh, thank you so much, President Wolf. Thank you, everyone. I haven't been president of anything since the sixth grade when I was president of the Drama Club, but uh, I am honored to serve and I'm proud to be able to showcase all the great work that we're doing here in San Francisco. And with that, I'll kick off the city librarians report this evening. We have a number of staff reports and I'm pleased to introduce our first staff presenter. Doreen Horston is the branch manager of our park branch library. And she is gonna be presenting about, it's the right, yeah, there you go. She's going to be presenting about an innovative new service model here in San Francisco to support our residents struggling with alcohol and substance abuse disorder and the incredible level of support and partnership that we're receiving from District 6 Supervisor Matt Dorsey's office in getting this pilot program launched. Doreen? Thank you. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my colleague, Shima Avalos. She couldn't attend today, but she contributed to a lot of the work and shared her, her insights throughout the process. So Shima, if you're listening, thank you. And now let's begin. I have called District 6 home for many years. As a longtime resident, I was interested in the work that Supervisor Matt Dorsey was doing to address the addiction and overdose crisis. San Francisco Recovers is a resolution Supervisor Dorsey, along with Supervisors Stefani and Mandelman, presented to the Board of Supervisors in 2022. In the plan, he enlists the help of 20 city departments in addressing the addiction and overdose crisis. I asked him, what about the public library? We have 12-step and recovery books to check out for free. He was pleased to hear this, and he asked me if the library would be willing to distribute 12-step books to help people who are on their recovery journey. The discussions that followed led us to where we are today. We have the main components in place and we are coordinating a launch date with the supervisor's office. We will have a soft launch starting with three locations, the main library, Mission Bay branch, and the park branch. And we will make these books available to anyone who needs them free of charge. If this effort is successful, we hope to expand this program to other branches in the system. Ultimately, the plan is to expand this free recovery book distribution to all our 27 neighborhood branch libraries because we know the disease of addiction is affecting San Franciscans throughout the city. The free book distribution is the final part of a project that started in January 2022, when I had a conversation with city librarian Michael Lambert about the Civic Center surroundings and issues. I felt that some action had to be taken. And as a librarian, the only thing I can do is offer books and information to the public. I asked for funds to purchase recovery titles. Michael approved this project and enlisted the support of the Collection Development Office. Here's a picture of a display of some of our recovery titles.
Several months into the project, Shima Avalos from the International Center joined me. Shima was already ordering recovery titles in Spanish because the last three years have highlighted the fact that COVID is not the only health concern affecting the community. For instance, a demonstrated concern is getting access to recovery resources in an individual's preferred language and maintaining sobriety amongst uncertainty and chaos. We decided to expand the project to include NA and AA materials in various international languages, an expansion which the International Center wholeheartedly supported. This project highlighted both extremes of our or ordering processes. Many titles on addiction, therapy, self-help, and related topics were easy to purchase through our vendors. And in these cases, new titles were purchased and old and missing titles replaced. Buying and replacing titles such as these is part of our permanent collection development plan, and the library is dedicated to have titles for checkout available to SFPL patrons to support them all throughout their recovery. Some of the most well-known and most requested recovery titles, including some of those published by Narcotics Anonymous and Alcoholics Anonymous, proved a challenge to order through our vendors. A local Naranon group and a local AA group donated brand new books for the SFPL collection. And with the help of the third and fourth floor materials management teams in the main library, we were able to get those items processed and on the shelves within 24 hours. Michael Lambert also approved the use of friends funds to purchase NA and AA titles that could not be obtained any other way than through direct purchase. By January 2023, SFPL had a robust collection of 12-step and recovery titles on their shelves. This list, created by the librarians at the Collection Development Office, is a good representation of the recovery collection that we have built and refreshed in the last year. Ordering books for distribution is different than ordering titles to become part of the library's circulating collection. Through a combination of Friends of the San Francisco Public Library funds and city funds, we were able to order more than 400 copies of 20 titles in English and Spanish for giveaway. As we conclude this presentation, I want to acknowledge the people who helped in this effort. Supervisor Dorsey, Michael Lambert, Shelley Cocking from the Collection Development Office, Chief of Maine, Katrin Rymuller, Chief of Branches, Rebecca Alcala Viraflor, and Brian Weaver, the third floor manager. We thank everyone who has helped us with this project and we look forward to the project's next chapter. Supervisor Dorsey is here and I'd like to invite him up to the podium to make some remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doreen. And I wanna thank, thank thanks to uh, Shima as well, and also um, Michael Lambert, and congratulations on your election as president. I'm proud of you. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about San Francisco Recovers. We brought a sign. This was for the event when we announced it last September. And what, what this was envisioned as was a way of having a political exercise, because one of the things that we discovered when we were going through doing some research on cities that have really grappled with many of the issues that we're grappling with now, many of them, especially in Europe and Canada and the United States. Um, there all seems to be a process where they finally have to get, cities have to go through their arguments and have the political thing and then realize that we got to give a little and, and, and there's no right way. It's got to be a little all of the above. Um, so we wanted to approach this as before we put pen to paper on policy, let's have a resolution of what we're asking for. And it was a wish list of items. I worked with Raphael Mandelman and Catherine Stephanie, and we basically identified all the things we could do as a city that other cities have done. You know, I wish we could claim credit as original ideas. And the reality is this is a playbook that we've cobbled together from multiple places around the world that San Francisco could do. And there were 21 city departments and six city commissions. Um, and it was asking, the idea is that there's a lot of whereas is why we need to do we do better as a city for reasons that probably are obvious. Um, 
And then it was asking city departments, what do you need from us? Here's the, here's the three or four things we would like you to, to, to do. What do you need from us to be successful in this? What resources, what obstacles do you identify? Um, and one of the things that I did, because I've worked in city government for a long time, I know what it is when a member of the board of supervisors sends something, a, a big document over to a department head. What it usually means is, now, by virtue of me being elected to the Board of Supervisors, I am more qualified to run your department than you are. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you how to go ahead and do that. And I, what I said was, I know how that, that, that plays out sometimes, and I just want to promise you, I'll never be that supervisor. Uh, but, I, so, but I reached out to department heads, and I said, this is genuinely asking the board what we can do to make you successful. And that's the approach that we're taking. Um, I will give you an update right now. We are going back to the drawing board on this to expand the consensus. And I'm working closely with Supervisor Hillary Ronan. Supervisor Ronan and I are in lockstep agreement on supervised consumption facilities and some things, but we're in disagreement on other things. What I what we agreed to when we, we went to New York to visit some overdose prevention sites, we had a great talk. And what we basically agreed to is, look, if you and I agree to some things, we're going to bring everybody along with us. So we're reimagining uh, San Francisco Recovers as San Francisco Recovers 2.0. But let me tell you the thing that was really inspiring to me. You know, you can imagine how this goes over with department heads when they were here. I'm, I'm, I'm giving some, some work for you to do. It meant the world to me that there was a city department that wasn't included in those 21 who said, hey, you know what? We've got a role to play in this. And I just want to give a shout out to Doreen and to Michael. This, what it says about the public library, um, to you, it could easily have been got away with that one. You know, you, you, this could have been <laughs> it, 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 no work, no work for us. And instead, you really saw a role. Um, and I want to emphasize how important it is. If for if whether I'm not sure if you know how experienced some of you are with recovery, but it's really important to understand that in the recovery community, the basic texts is really foundational. Um, it's what you when you go to meet with your sponsor, when you're really coming into a program, you you read through it, you go to meetings and you read through this. It's it is so foundational to what recovery is, and I really really appreciate too that there's not just 12 steps, but also life ring. And by the way, we have a life, we host a life ring meeting in city hall. Life ring is a, not a secular group for people who aren't really comfortable with spiritual principles, but we host one in city hall at noon on Fridays in the board um, conference room. But this is a really important thing to do. Um, and the idea of making this available, lowering the barrier to entry, um, is a very powerful thing, and I think it's just going to mean a lot. I, I'm working with the mayor's office because I do want to make sure that we are um, highlighting the, the great work of the, the library in this, making sure that people have access to the basic literature and also can come out and see, maybe get some information about what meetings to go to. I will say, as somebody who's in recovery himself, and I've said this it was told to me when I had a sponsor, and I've told it to people I sponsor. In many ways, San Francisco can be a bad influence when it comes to substance use disorder and alcohol use disorder, and I get that. But the flip side of that is we have an amazing recovery community, too. And it really is out there, and I think that is going to be, when we get going in the right direction, the thing that's really going to make us special, that's really going to solve this problem and turn lives around is going to be just people getting together over a book and going through principles and working together one-on-one. -on -one. That's the miracle of recovery. I really, really appreciate the work of the public library, and I'm just so appreciative, and I'm just excited to, to be a partner with you. So thank you so much to be a part of San Francisco Recovers. <laughs> Thank you so much, Supervisor Dorsey. Thank you for your stalwart support of the library and for all your leadership. And thank you, Doreen, for your passion and commitment to this and originating all of this work. Thank you, Shima, as well, if you're out there. Um, I know the commissioners are going to have questions, so please just sit tight. We have a couple more quick presentations, um, and then we'll have public comment. So next up is Michelle Jeffers, our Chief of Community Programs and Partnerships, and she is going to talk about our Creativity Explored Library Card Contest.
Hey everyone, uh, Michelle Jeffers, Community Programs and Partnerships, Creativity Explored Library Card Contest. Um, first of all, I wanted to talk to you a little bit in case you weren't familiar with Creativity Explored, which is celebrating its 40th year in San Francisco this year. It was started in 1983 by an artist and a psychologist. And it was sparked at that time by the nationwide deinstitutionalization movement um, of disabled people. So they wanted to launch a movement in, in response that um, expanded the notions of artistry. So their theme is that art is essential to life and they are based in the Mis Mission District and they provide studio space, supplies, teaching artists and support to de developmentally disabled and neurodiverse adults so that they may have access to the human right of making art. Um, with their 40th anniversary, Creativity Explored, which we had worked with in the past for some exhibits, reached out to say, you know, we'd love to work with you for something special for our 40th year. And we thought it would just be a wonderful way to turn the artwork that, that their artists make into library cards. Um, so the prompt we gave to the Creativity Explored artists was to um, design library cards that were inspired by the city of San Francisco and by their love of libraries. They submitted 30 pieces of artwork. Um, and we displayed them. We had an exhibit on the fourth floor. It actually, it's still up through the end of the month on the fourth floor of the main library. All 30 art um, artistic representations of a library card are still on display, but we also did a public voting process for those 30 pieces. And we had more than 2,700 people vote for the cards. And we actually do have five winners that I'm prepared to show you tonight. But I also wanted to explain that we time this as well because this we're coming into National Library Week. And National Library Week is a, is a promotion of the American Library Association. And the theme of it is that there is more to the story. And I thought this was a wonderful way to tell the story of Creativity Explored as and, the, and these artists and this organization through library cards. Um, as you know, library cards are, are the, the gateway to the library. Um, there's not a single event that we do in which we don't try to encourage people and do library card signups. Um, and people, when we are out there doing signups of our library cards, people are always so amazed and delighted by San Francisco Public Library's unique take on library cards that ours are really beautiful, very unique. They've been designed in the past by SFUSD school children, by a citywide contest that also included adults and teens being involved in it. We have more than 55,000 new library cards issued every year. Um, and they've just been, it's just oh, something that people get very excited about, obviously, getting their new library card. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the five cards that receive the most votes that will be turned into new San Francisco Public Library cards. You ready? Okay, good. <laughs> First is Isaiah Gomez, Golden Gate Reflection. Let me tell you a little bit about Isaiah's. His style is rooted in realism, architectural illustration, and fantasy themes. He has an expert eye for proportion and perspective as evidenced by his illustrations of the Golden Gate Bridge, and you can see Coit Tower and Sutro Tower in the background. Um, he is comfortable going between mediums from digital to analog, from pencil on paper to digital pens in Photoshop. He says, it's because I am an artist. Um, that flexibility leads to innovation. One particularly satisfying challenge Gomez found was in digitally creating this the glowing quality and the lights of the city. He manipulated the digital filters and paint tools and was able to achieve his desired effect to bring this warmth of light to this library card. Um, and I also want to notice that it also seems to reflect the Golden State Warriors colors. So there's that too. And then we have Andrew Wong, whose who's, um, library card is called Good Night Moon. You may see that it um, is very similar to the Margaret Wise Brown book of the same name. Andrew is known for his imaginative interpretations of trains, whimsical animals, and anthropomorphic figures, and he usually works primarily in clay. His lively subjects are characterized by large, expressive eyes and eyebrows, and his functional pieces include face mugs and animal bowls. His, fig his, his figures, and especially his trains, are usually reminiscent of toys in picture books, as you can see his inspiration here. And then we have uh, Guadalupe Ramos. Hers is called Victoriana Dream. Obviously, it's inspired by the houses along Steiner Street um, near Alamo Square. She is also, this is interesting, she's also inspired by her, by her life in San Francisco in the 1960s and her love of punk rock and heavy metal music. Though her favorite color is black, her artwork is colorful, sometimes drawing upon psychedelic imagery. She also excels, as you can see, with colored pencil and pastel. 
and her level hand and natural shading complement the grandeur of her subjects, such as the hilly facade of San Francisco uh, streetscape. Our next winner was Nubia Ortega. This one is not titled. Nubia brings her careful hand and attention to detail to every artwork, no matter the medium. Ortega uses color masterfully, playfully balancing earthy natural tones with bright calculated splashes of pure saturated color. A focused artist, she spends ample time on each piece, first methodically laying out a composition and then carefully choosing colors to fill in her landscapes and portraits. And our final winner was Hiro Medina, a pecking good read. With thick lines, pastel colors and precise shading, Hiro Medina transports viewers to a fantastical world through his spellbinding depictions of landscapes, characters and futuristic themes. Hero's graphite illustration here calls to mind an alternative steampunk universe, often featuring birds, which is his favorite motif, and strange contraptions. He says, I aim to make my art different from a product of artificial intelligence. I've been trying to give more meaning and detail. It's no longer viable for art to simply look good. And that concludes our library card presentation. I'm looking forward to seeing these um, become physical reality, and I hope you'll all think about maybe changing your library card for one of these. Thank you. Wow, that was great, Michelle. Thank you so much. Our final presenter this evening is Jen Wu, Family Engagement Coordinator within our Community Programs and Partnerships Division. And Jen is gonna be presenting about the library's annual celebration of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Take it away, Jen. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jen Wu, and I'm the Family Engagement Coordinator. This year's Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month theme is Strengthening the Fabric of Our Community, which is perfect for the library's celebrations we call Weaving Stories. We are excited to share all of our events, exhibits, and partnerships. Oh, sorry. Opening April 29th here at the main Juliet Gallery, Dreaming People's History, featuring contemporary artists and organizers and dialogue with Kearney Streets Workshop's extensive archive. If you walked in through the Grove Street entrance, you may have noticed a huge, colorful, beautiful banner celebrating AANHPI with art by our featured artist, Nancy Hom, a beloved figure in the local arts community. Hom has dedicated her career to the arts, working in a variety of capacities, including the executive director of Kearney Street Workshop. You can read an interview with Hom on our Weaving Stories landing page. Um, SFPL's Children's Center, Chinese Center, and Magazines and Newspaper Center partner with the SF State Asian American Studies Department, the Association of Chinese Teachers, and the Square and Circle Club for the 10th anniversary of the Asian Pacific Islander American Biography Project, honoring distinguished APIA politicians past and present. Appreciation to our own Jerry Deere for creating space and commitment to this ongoing partnership. Participating in the creative arts creates a pathway for healthy aging and combats loneliness and shares people's cultural arts and traditions. Some highlights include a workshop with educator Rachel Lozada, who will discuss and demonstrate traditional weaving including a background on the socio-cultural and historical significance to the Filipino-American community. Uh, learn the basic techniques of Chinese brush painting and calligraphy. Participants will learn how to hold a brush and to write basic strokes. While we cannot show you all the amazing events, we do want to highlight a few. There will be a classical tea ceremony and tasting, a Chinatown walking tour, film screening and filmmaker discussion with director Josh Chuck on Chinatown Rising, and we continue our Nature Booth series with partners, Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy, who will explore the history of Chinese in the Bay Area. We have an artist spotlight with textile artist Jessica So Renteng, who will talk about her work as an embroidery artist, perfect for weaving stories. This being our first AANHPI in our new format of programming all year round, I wanted to point out some of the amazing author talks we have been having outside of the traditional month. We have a new partnership with a diasporic <laughs> Vietnamese, I'm sorry if I said that incorrectly, uh, Artist Network bringing a wide range of authors representing Southeast Asia. 
You'll see author events on this slide. Programs begin in March and we'll have events at our library locations in addition to the Ruby, Medicine for Nightmares books, and Manny's SF. Okay. During AANHPI month, we have an array of author visits for youth that pairs activities with literacy. Junji, Junjo Lee, food ethnographer, will be leading a read aloud of her books. Lee will then facilitate a fermenting workshop for children and their families to make krauchi, which is a fusion of sauerkraut and kimchi. Eunice and Sabrina Moyle not only are the owners of Hello Lucky, a San Francisco-based store, family-friendly uh, for books and other goodies, uh, they are also siblings, authors, and illustrators. I originally met the siblings during Kid Quake and found their read aloud and live demonstration of drawing, entertaining, and a fun way to offer programming with a literacy connection. The 2022 Summer Stride Illustrator Mini Fan is back. We're excited to be hosting Mini Fan at our four of our locations as she prov promotes her newly illustrated book, The Yellow Owl Die. We have um, a variety of music at our branches as well, starting with free press music of Filipina American led San Francisco based music collective with roots in soul, jazz, blues, and improv. Um, this is a new partnership between free press music and the library. Uh, our cherished and repeat performers will be returning to our libraries, including Christy Yoshiro, performing Taiko and sharing Japanese folk tales, and SF Gujang Music Society playing music on the zithers. Both are popular with library staff and patrons alike. Um, speaking of returning and cherished performers, both SF Calicandra and Esther Kwan are returning to our libraries. Calicandra performs Catholic dance and promotes Indian and Indian art and cultural heritage. Um, Esther Kwan is a presenter performing or presenting uh, to our library patients a chance to learn crafting techniques and to build community at the libraries. And we're happy to introduce a new presenter and partner, Rose, who will be sharing cultural mask making um, at Richmond Branch. The CPP coordinators are continu continuing to build relationships with the community and offer programming that reflects the full scope of our San Francisco communities and the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander diaspora. We continue to feature AANHPI authors, performers, and presenters all year round. I thank you, Library Commission, for your time. I welcome any comments, questions, or concerns. Thank you, Jen, for all your hard work and leadership to make our library system an affirming place and to celebrate the culture and heritage of our community. And that concludes the City Librarian's Report. Thank you very much, and a special thank you to Doreen, Michelle, and Jen for your um, outstanding presentations. Um, before we bring this back to the Commission for our comments and questions, we open this up for public comment. Uh, here and we'll have public comment here in Correct and then move to our participants via WebEx. Public comment is now open here in Correct Auditorium. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Perina. I'm a lifeline San Franciscan, 77 years old. I presently live in the lower uh, Nam Hill neighborhood. I am 42 years sober and clean, and I am a veteran. And for the last 40 or so years, I have been involved in some way or another with the recovery movement here in San Francisco and nationally. I'm a retired general officer, so the Veteran Administration has uh, um, allowed me to have a big voice in their recovery program. Um, so what I'm endorsing is Doreen's presentation for a variety of reading materials for um, the recovering addict and drunk. Um, we need different resources according to our needs. Um, I have been working with low income and homeless um, addicts and, and alcoholics, um, and they need different 
resources than someone with my education or Doreen's education or Matt's store. So I'm urging you on behalf of especially seniors that I work with uh, to adopt this program. Um, I think there's a real need in the community and uh, I think the public library could be a valuable resource to help us with our recovery and with staying sober. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and thank you for your service. Um, any further public comment here in Coret Auditorium? Seeing there's no further comment here, I turn it over to operations to see if there are any participants wishing to um, offer their comment via WebEx. Madam President, we have one caller in the queue. I will put them through now. Caller number four, your time begins now. Yes, are we still on item five, the city librarian's report? Yes. Thank you. I heard that I was not recognized, and in fact, I had raised the hand, and I don't know why that was not reported. Uh, I then pressed star three, and I had lowered my hand and pressed star three again and raised it to be able to speak now. But I think there needs to be a little bit of attention paid or at least some allowance for miscommunications or misrecognitions. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for these reports. The library is a tremendous resource. Um, it's certainly very well funded in our city. It's one of the most well-funded, if not the most well-funded, and it's certainly in its category of size in the nation. And so I think always that we can expect the very best. Uh, thank you very much for the reports. Um, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to see the winning uh, cards since uh, apparently you were going to uh, reveal, do the big reveal over um, in person. Um, I would like, first of all, I think many of these programs could be discussed as a separate agenda item and should be rather than lumping them all together so that there's rather limited time for discussion and explanation and possibly answering questions. And second of all, um, I have mentioned in public comment generally what I think of as basic bread and butter issues, and I wish that the city librarian's report would also deal with how the library is addressing things like very slow arrival of new books. Uh, can't that be speeded up? That takes weeks and sometimes months while other places are discussing them and bookstores are selling them. Availability of current newspapers and magazines. Uh, there seems to be some difference between different locations so that things, uh, magazines, for example, that are weekly that go out immediately when they arrive and are loaned out means that the current magazines are very hard to find at local library uh, locations. Uh, if there were a consistent um, policy of having them be non-circulating for a time, that would give people more of a chance to get at those books, uh, or magazines, sorry. And with respect to books, it seems to me that when books are very popular and have long waiting lists, there should be some mechanism for having them as, at least some, having those as reference material so that people at least can have a look at them within the library, maybe come in a couple of times if they're really longer material to read, but also just be able to see that they exist and glance at them and maybe have them for a short time within the library. Thank you, caller number four. Your time is up. Madam President, there are no additional callers in the queue at this time. Thank you very much, operations. Thank you for the public comments. Public comment on agenda item number five is now um, over, and we will now open it up for uh, discussion and questions from the commissioners. And um, just want to invite Doreen, Michelle, and Jen to um, be ready to answer any questions, um, I think, or respond to any comments. I think there's a lot of enthusiasm and some questions. So I'm going to turn it to over ask to first comment from um, Commissioner Ono. Thank you. Um, thank you, Doreen, Michelle, and Jenna for your presentations. Um, I wanted to also Supervisor Dorsey for coming to explain to us the program. Um, I am 
uh, our family has alcoholism. And I was just wondering if there's any books with Al-Anon, with the family component in available for free distribution. Because with alcoholic, alcoholic um, family, you do have the other family members also affected. So um, I did order some Al-Anon books for circulation. They were part of the first wave of books that I ordered to go into the collection. And um, I've seen the books that we have right now for distribution, and I was going to recommend that we start including Naranon and Al-Anon as part of those giveaway books because we talk to a lot of people who come to the library and they are family members of addicts and alcoholics. And they ask us, you know, what can I do? What are the resources? And so it's good to be able to give them resources as well. So you must be reading my mind. I've already <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> but as of right now, they are in the circulating collection. Okay. I had a feeling, but I just wanted to bring that up. But I think it's a great idea. And I'm so glad you guys, especially after the pandemic, I do know that there has been a rise in narcotics and also alcoholism. So thank you very much. Um, and also, if you can pass it on to Supervisor Dorsey, if his office is still here. Uh, Michelle, do we get to vote on any of the cards or are, they, are all of the designs going to be available? Um, the five designs I showed you will all be available, but I didn't show you all 30 that we voted on. Oh, no. <laughs> so but those five will all be made into cards. Okay. I like the fact that today's 420, so there is a 420 design in there. So <laughs> it's very San Francisco, but thank you. I'm sorry, I have to do that. Um, also, Jenna, as being an ape, Asian American, I appreciate all of the programming that you have. And I'm glad that you had programming also in April and also some coming up later on in the year because some people may not be around all of May and avail not available to partake in all of it. So I appreciate the fact that you've started in April, going through May and other months. So thank you very much for the foresight. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And that's a new feature of our cultural awareness programming uh, to have events all year round that represent the city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Ono, for your um, insightful comments. And Oh, of course. Keep I'm going. sorry. Um, Mr. Palema. Thank you very much for your service and for everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ono. Um, Commissioner Mall. Yeah, I had alcoholism in my family too. And I echo your thoughts about um, having the resources for the family members or friends or whatever. Um, is there uh, an effort or does it exist that each library host a meeting as well, because I think the books are only part of the issue. To my knowledge, not every library location hosts a meeting. Um, not all of our neighborhood branches have community meeting rooms. So that's one just facility structural barrier. But Doreen, maybe you know if any of our neighborhood branches are hosting any meetings. I know people can rent our meeting rooms, you know, nonprofits and community groups, they can uh, apply to use our spaces, but I'm not sure if these particular groups are taking advantage of that or not. Yeah. So I would love to do that at my branch park. Um, according to the meeting room rules, uh, one group can only have it for six months consecutively. And so we feel that Consistency is really important when hosting 12-step groups. So we don't want to start at a location and then six months later, they have to move somewhere else. The workaround for this would be to have those groups be a library-sponsored public program. Right. Have a staff person right. who could be the contact person and work with community contacts to set that up. And so that is something I am open to talking about, and I would love to be able to do that. So, um, you know, I always thought that once this part of the book ordering and everything, that this project would be done and I would be over with it. And it's become clear to me that it's not done. And <laughs> there's a lot more um, need out there. And people have already contacted me with suggestions and ideas. So I would say keep an eye on this and 
well, see what else we do. I'm uh, just walking down the streets. You can tell how much more there is to do on this. And I think it would be terrific if there was a list that people could be handed and say, there's a meeting here, 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 28 libraries all over the city, um, all week long. And I, I think that I was actually surprised that Supervisor Dorsey said that um, he was surprised that the library was so supportive. I think if, if um, an agency, an organization is going to live and work in this city right now, it's all hands on deck. I don't think it's a question of just being a good guy in this instance. I think every organization has to do what they can to work on this problem. So um, I'd like to see the library do more. And I think this is a great start, but I think that you need the meetings as well. Well, we do have the meeting schedules to distribute with our book distribution, but I hear you and I agree with you. So let's see what we can do. Good, thanks. Doreen, I think you're um, in this for a longer time than you thought. <laughs> But that's the joy of your success, right? It's been, it, you've touched on something so important that there is this desire to um, really expand it, deepen it, and make it part of what the library offers the community. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Lopez. I just have a question um, in terms of the San Francisco Recovers. Um, is there... And, and just um, out of curiosity, um, like age uh, range, um, I, I believe that um, after the pandemic, uh, we have seen younger um, folks um, dealing with substance abuse and alcoholism. And I was just wondering if, you know, um, there are any books perhaps or that are geared to you know the younger population so when i was ordering the circulating collection i tried to order everything i could find and i did order some of the alateen publications mm -hmm. um most of the stuff that i've seen is starts kind of a the teen teen years, um, but we also know from working with youth, and I'm a children's librarian, that there are young people who are experiencing this in their families, and that they need resources. So we do have books in the collection that address that. Um, but again, I would love to expand it more, and I would love to get more of those materials in the library. Um, I did have a donation from a local Naranon group. Um, they gave a lot of literature to the Mix, our teen center. And we had the um, information for a Nara teen group, which is for teens who are, you know, have family or loved ones who are addicts. It's a remote meeting. And um, the closest one is in the Pacific Northwest. But because it's on Zoom, it's in the same time zone. So we posted these flyers, I gave them a stack of flyers, and then the librarians in the mix are so clever, they put them in the restroom so that people would see them, and maybe if they didn't want other people to see them taking the flyers, they could just take them. And that had all the meeting information, and I can certainly get more of those materials. So again, if you support us in this effort, I'm happy to keep working on this. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Commissioner Lopez. Um, Commissioner Bolander. So, yeah, thank you very much um, for the presentation. Um, um, as a recovering alcoholic, um, this is very valuable work. And um, sorry, I'm choking up a little bit. Um, and uh, I'd really love to see us do more about this. Um, it affects not only the people that are going through it, but also their families. and. Um, I know how um, powerful support like this is. Um, I personally don't go to AA. I, I sort of did it on my own. Um, 
five years almost in May. And, um, but I have family members that have gone and um, it's a powerful thing. So I would encourage us as a commission and as an organization to look into continuing this, funding it, expanding it if we can. Um, and you have my full support to do that. Um, it's really important, especially now. There's a lot of um, challenges in the world. And so, um, great job. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Commissioner Bolander, for um, sharing your own personal journey. It really does make such an impact um, and really propels us to really want to do more and reach deeper and further. So really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so that concludes our um, uh, city librarians report. But in conclusion, Doreen, I just want to thank you for initiating this, launching it, growing it, and your incredible dedication. It really does make such a difference in the lives of so many. Um, and Michelle, as always, um, your presentations are very informative and I think Creativity Explorers is one of the great resources of, in San Francisco, and it's wonderful to feature them. And so thank you for um, making that possible. And um, Jen, I just want to thank you for the work you do in your day job and then the work you're doing to really promote um, the AAPI community through these very robust, exciting, dynamic programs that, as um, Commissioner Ono said, is or the phrase that we've used is more than a month. Um, and so th thank you for, for those efforts and really to thank all the staff who work with all of you to make all these programs possible. So thank you. Um, we will now go to item four. Um, so in case anyone's listening in, we have not forgotten you. Um, we just made a shift in the order and we're going back to item number four, which is um, a presentation on um, capital projects. So I turn it back to city librarian, Michael Lambert. Thank you, President Wolf. Library staff appreciates this opportunity to present an update on our considerable number of capital projects uh, throughout the library system. And just as a caveat, I wanna point out that this report will center on the library's capital projects, not including the three major branch capital projects. We'll be prepared uh, to come back next month with our partners from the Department of Public Works and present on that. But this evening we have John Cunha, our facilities director. He's gonna deliver this presentation. Thank you, City Librarian. Um, good evening, uh, Commissioners, Madam President. Um, I think it was almost 10 months ago to the day I was here to be introduced to you. So it's been a very um, exciting 10 months for me, very dynamic and education. So um, looking forward to tonight. Um, it's a real honor to discuss with you some of the highlights about facilities. Um, it's important to me as a facilities director to kind of consider facilities as a whole division. Um, so I will be touching on some highlights from the various units within facilities. Um, we're going to be looking at kind of the system in general. Um, quick look at that. We'll be looking at some of the facility highlights in the last couple of years. We'll be looking at some of the smaller project accomplishments in the last couple of years, some of the ongoing projects and then some of the future work on the horizon. And I did just because it's in my notes, I got to mention it, um, but Michael already mentioned it. We'll be back next month with our colleagues from Public Works to discuss our uh, library improvements for tomorrow projects, our bigger uh, branch renovation projects. So, so the facilities overview, um, we have a total, I love this number because it's a big number, I guess, 672,929 square feet within facilities to care for, uh, to keep secure, to keep operating, and to keep clean. Okay, so as you can see there, main library, 376,000 square feet. Um, and you can see the rest there in front of you. So we're going to start off with some highlights from some of the uh, the various units which make up facilities. It's a very dynamic group. So custodial, um, one of the challenges there, that is our largest unit in terms of numbers of people, um, is, is vacancies. So we're continuing uh, with the help of our outstanding HR department to, to fill these vacancies. We're currently running about 8.8% uh, vacancy rate. 
Um, I like that number because when compared to the city's overall 13.3, um, we're doing a pretty good job in a difficult um, employment environment right now. Um, they've also, Custodial has led the way on our zero waste program. Um, that's been outstanding work that, uh, that my manager, uh, Charles Coleman, has helped with there. Um, one of the things I always like to point out about Custodial, and I think the Night of Ideas is a wonderful example of it. We had people in the building till what, 2 a.m.? Uh, the library was ready to open the next day. So that's, uh, that's, that's good work from our custodial department. I really appreciate them. Um, they're always on point for the open houses at the various branches. And uh, I have yet to have them caught, be caught flat footed with a branch manager asking for window washing or pressure washing uh, because they have an upcoming open house. They're always on top of it. So I'm very proud of that unit. Uh, delivery services. A uh, very important unit. Anything that moves about the library systems uh, goes through delivery services. Um, we've recently added a very key um, employee there. Our new senior inventory clerk, Stanley Tam, joined us in February. He brings some exciting insight and um, ideas when it comes to inventory control and requisition processes that um, I'm really excited to work with him on. Engineering, again, working on filling vacancies there. Um, I am pushing hard. My vision for that unit is really to bring it up to more of a state of an, the art unit. We're pushing a lot of training um, through them. They have um, taken some, Buckle Smith is one of our main vendors. They've taken some training recently on troubleshooting um, and how to work with that vendor for parts acquisition. Um, I've had Two of their members go through their lean leaders training um, internally and um, just various recertifications. I also have members of the engineering team that are looking, looking at um, project management courses, that type of thing. So big fan of that. Security. Um, security is obviously a challenge. Um, but the strides made in the security unit in the last three or four years have been amazing. Uh, staffing is way up. The training has gone through the roof. Um, they've become such a formalized and professional unit. Very proud of them. Just to highlight some of the trainings, um, a mandatory piece that's called a PC 832. That's the use of force and arrest so that they know what they're doing, what they can do when dealing with problematic situations. Um, another one I really like is the supportive crisis response training that they all take. Um, and I'm also proud to say we have one of our um, one of our supervisors supervisors currently in the Emerging City Leaders uh, Program, which is a fairly prestigious training program here at the city. Um, on the horizon for them, we're going to be we've well we've added two new vehicles, we've repurposed one vehicle. So on the horizon, we will have more mobile units. And we are about to pilot a new three sector security um, coverage model, which will reduce response time and increase security presence as needed at the branches. So in the past two years, uh, the library or facilities has continued to support the library um, as the library serves as a community center. Um, facilities that supported library divisions in this effort, especially during special community focused events such as open houses, uh, night of ideas, the laureates, dinner, on and on. Um, we continue to be activated as inclement weather and poor air quality index respite centers, and we're continuing to develop that program internally to be able to provide more relief for our patrons. Um, we currently have 24 of 28 public facilities which have MERV 13, 13 filtration. Um, 17 of our public buildings have a um, BMS controlled dampers, which are controlled here from the main, which is important for those bad air quality days. And we have six facilities currently that have AC in the community rooms. So the biggest thing, which is hard to put a real number on or statistic to, but is just rep Promoting recovery, that's one thing I'm really excited about here at the library. As all the branches have returned uh, to seven-day service, um, obviously that 
you know, puts a strain on facilities. And I think uh, all of the units within facilities have stepped up to really um, to make that happen and to support uh, the public side of the library. So now we're just going to take a look at some of the projects that have wrapped up in the last couple of years. Um, the main library elevator upgrade <laughs> was an enthusiastic project, um, which uh, took a while, but it is done. All seven library, um, sorry, at libraries, elevators have been upgraded. Um, and that's finally done. So celebration on that. Um, the Marina Branch Library Roofing and Waterproofing. So this is kind of a pilot branch for this building envelope project that we're, we're partaking in or, or moving down the road with. And I'm really happy to say that um, that was completed in the winter of 2022. And even through this winter that we had, we had no calls for service at that branch for any leaks whatsoever. So that's that's a win. Very happy it's about that. It's pretty good test. The support services building at 199th, uh, the replacement of all the windows, or not all the windows, but a great portion of the windows at that building was completed last year. Tricky project because of the historical nature of that building, but proud to say it's done. And you, we'll come back to 199th in a minute with future projects. So some of our active projects, and again, these are our, you know, our smaller projects. First off, we have moved into phase two of 750 Brannon. So our, basically what, the way I think of it is our storage facility. Um, we will be installing compact shelving in the big main room there, acquiring motorized lifts for librarians, library staff to be able to organize the collection there. And the main purpose there is to provide a, a safe, secure, and environmentally controlled repository for our collections, which are no, you know, not popularly uh, circulated. Um, we're looking forward very much so to completing that um, in August or September of this year. Um, there we go. And then the next is the Park Branch Library roof and waterproofing. Uh, we're very much looking forward to the same amount of success with that as we had at the Marina Branch. A similar process there um, with our with our friends at Public Works. That should be completed in quarter three of 2024. Um, the Talking Books and Braille Center. This is an ongoing project. Um, this one's kind of near and dear to my heart because it started since I've been working here. So it's been fun to watch the whole project. Um, and I really like that we serve uh, this group of patrons. Um, we're looking forward to that being finished. A um, little tough to say, but I'm, I'm guesstimating July of 2023. It is currently in construction. Um, I have a quote here from Dr. Phillips, our Brailleist, um, which I liked. He says, we are anticipating at the end of this project that TBBC will be hopefully, will have a state-of-the-art accessible space that will meet the needs of the blind and low vision community, no matter their visual acuity. The space will accommodate TBBC's aspiration to give efficient and effective service by providing an encumbered space for programs, community building, and self-discovery. With improvements to our technology, lighting and acoustics, we'll be able to support a level of service that could not have been given because of the limitations of the previous space. So that is an exciting one. Moving on, some of the projects on the horizon um, that would fall into this kind of small capital category. Um, the main library, I believe, was opened in 96. Um, it is time for some, some work or some love at the main. So the, the roof is uh, the roof replacement is a pretty major project uh, that's in the planning phases now. Um, the library seismic moat. Um, I assume you all know what the seismic mode is. Okay, um, that is pretty much beyond its useful life; it needs to be renovated. Um, so that's an upcoming project, um, and these are all um, slated to start this next year. Okay. Um, now, going back to 
199th. Um, there's a lot going on at that building actually. Uh, so we, we already discussed the windows were replaced, uh, increasing the efficiency there. We also have a lighting efficiency program that we're working with our um, colleagues at the PUC to increase the efficiency there. And then we have environmental controls and a, full, um, a solar system, well, solar system, solar panel system, um, which will be happening in the near future. Uh, it'll be a long project because of supply chain issues with that type of equipment, but we should be getting it off the ground in the next couple months. So that's exciting. So that's gonna be a, a great energy efficient building um, when we're done with all of that. So some of the facilities needs and priorities, um, we're here to maintain a state of good repair by focusing on funding to deliver as needed repairs and renewals. Um, we wanna prioritize energy efficiency and climate resilience improvements through delivering and funding. Um, we pursue citywide capital for major projects informed by forthcoming asset assessment, which is a project that's near and dear to my heart. And that's targeted for fiscal year 24 as well. And then we're here to support programmatic priorities by considering facilities needs as part of the uh, SFPL strategic planning initiative, which is currently underway that we're all very excited about. And I personally am really looking forward to the development of the facilities master plan and uh, being personally involved with that. So another, so as a civil servant, um, I think this is, I mean, it's a simple slide, but it's important to me um, that the library continues to be a respite center on those tough days, whether it be excessive rain, uh, bad air quality index, uh, or exceedingly hot days. So we continue to work with the Department of Emergency Management on those, on those uh, issues. And then I'm I'm really looking forward to we're you know we're going through a weird climate time right now and and with the way things are changing so it's important that we work with uh, with our friends at Public Works to continue to harden our facilities in such a way that we are able to provide these respite centers and so there's some there's some definite changes in the industry you know just being lead certified is really not good enough anymore we also need to be able to close the building down so that's something that will always be kind of in our crosshairs coming up. And that is it. Questions? Thanks, John. Outstanding. Thank you very much for that incredibly informative um, presentation. Um, before we bring it back to the commission for questions and comment, we're going to open it up for public comment. Um, for those um, listening, just to remind you that we are on item four, um, which is a facilities report, capital projects update. We are a little bit out of order from making a quick change. Um, so public comment on item number four, the discussion uh, capital projects update is now open here in Corret Auditorium. Seeing that there's no public comment here in Correct Operations, I turn to you. If there are anyone um, on uh, the WebEx platform who wants to make public comment, please move them forward. Thank you. Madam President, there is one caller in the queue. I will put them through now. Caller number four, your three minutes begin now. I'm unmuted. Okay, this is Peter Warfield, Executive Director of Library Users Association. Library users 2004 at yahoo.com and PO Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 94117-0544. Thank you very much for this report. I have two uh, sort of outstanding questions, and that is, first of all, uh, we've heard of a strategic plan. I'm not sure that I've heard or remember hearing about facilities master plan. That seems to be something new. And that's certainly something that one might want to be doing, but not having heard about it before, I think there was some mention that it's ongoing. I think that needs to be defined and explained as to where that's going, what that's going to include, and so on and so forth. Um, with respect to uh, the 750 Brandon Street facility phase two compact shelving on my page 36, uh, I'm actually a little bit alarmed about that. 
And especially when I hear the facilities person saying that this is for collections that are not popularly circulating. Well, you know, we know well that access to books and materials is a way for them to get interest by the people and folks to be able to even know they exist. Uh, compact shelving, as far as I'm concerned, and closed shelving uh, is deadly. You know, that's death for books. I once checked different editions of or, or different copies of books uh, that had been uh, left on open shelving at the new main and others that were on closed shelving and the one on the ones on the the copies that were on closed shelving were basically had dropped dead with circulation while other others were having a healthy circulation from being on open shelves. Um, it's alarming to me that a public library in particular, where not that many people are scholarly trained in using catalogs and search methods, and even for those who are, browsing is a significantly important way that people enjoy and appreciate and find materials that uh, would be of interest to them. So I'm very concerned that now more stuff seems to be in, in the planning to be entombed in compact shelving, which is even harder to browse even if somebody were to get in there. I think the library ought to consider space, the catastrophically poor planning that resulted in a new building and a huge bond that resulted in less space for books. Maybe the library ought to consider an annex or some other thing where the books can get out from compact shelving and closed shelving and be out in the open for the public. Maybe that's something Thank you, caller number four. Your time is up. Madam President, there are no other callers in the queue at this time. This item, and I now turn it to discussion, uh, the discussion on the capital projects update to the commission. Um, John, we want to thank you for your great presentation. I can't believe it's only been 10 months that you've been here. You feel very much part of the fabric. I, it's really wonderful how you've really um, just dove in and embraced it. And what wasn't covered in your presentation was all the other things you've done that were not planned. And there are many of those. So thank you for that. So comments, questions, um, Commissioner Mall. Sorry to be so chatty tonight, but I have questions. Um, <laughs> um, John, you can only imagine you haven't been here that long, but I'm very happy to hear that the elevators have been updated. It's been a sore spot with me for years, yep, years. Yes. Um, there was one thing that you said that struck me that there's only six community rooms that are air conditioned yes, the, out of 28. That is correct. Okay. Can we do anything about that or are we sort of stuck with that? We work on it continually. Yeah, but the community rooms are typically the larger rooms. So where we are able to kind of do smaller systems to bring some sort of alleviation that we can do in-house fairly straightforward and we can knock out a few of those a year, they, they can't really handle the load of community rooms. Um, so typically community rooms are going to happen, you know, in our, like our larger renovations, that type of thing. Do we have fans? You know, like, um, oh, yeah, a lot of our, like, especially um, some of our newer facilities have like passive systems where they have, you know, lower vents that open, they have large fans that to pull the air in. But like I said, that's, that's where things kind of went, you know, a certain direction in the industry back in the, you know, early 90s. And now we're finding that we don't really like those passive systems because of the air quality issues and stuff like that. So, you know, it's constantly, the stuff is constantly churning and, and being developed. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. Well, yeah, so, yeah sort of, because I remember those hot days that were in San Francisco, right. which, um, you know, admittedly are rare, yes. except they seem to be less rare going forward. Yes, ma'am. That the libraries really were a respite, and people were very grateful that there was anywhere they could go to cool off. Yes. So I urge us to keep some rooms cool. Yes, ma'am. Further comments, um, Commissioner Wong? 
John, I don't have any questions. Just want to say thank you for the presentation and um, thank you for starting your presentation by recognizing your team because I feel like um, the the folks um, there are their work is just often uh, overlooked and it's not very present sort of. Um, uh, front of mind sort of topic to talk about. So I appreciate you coming here and sharing us all the fantastic work that, that the team has been doing. Um, and please just send them our uh, gratitude and 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 um, just thank them for for all their hard work. I will. Thank you. Great. Um, oh, Commissioner Lopez. Um, I'm going to echo uh, my fellow commissioner. Um, I was uh, at a library, and as I was, I was leaving, um, people were talking about how clean it was, how nice it looked, how shiny the floors were, and and you know, like I have to agree, it's all the the different branches and and the libraries that they, they are kept really well. Um, so thank you, and thank you to your staff. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, I think you heard, John, that we're really um, enthusiastic about your leadership in this effort and your uh, commitment to bringing your team forward and making them feel integrated and integral. And um, I mean, those kinds of comments don't happen very often in the city. So it's really um, wonderful to, to hear that. But thank you. And um, here's to the next great 10 months ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Let's double it and Thank triple you. it and quadruple it. Thank you. And it really is an honor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so uh, we are now jumping to item number six, since we've already done item number five, and that is adjournment. Um, so we will um, open for public comment before commission, commission discussion and action on adjournment. So public comment on adjournment item number six is now open here in Correct. Um, if there's anyone for public comment. Um, since I don't see anyone for public comment here in Correct operations, if there's anyone who would like to make public comment on this item in the WebEx platform, please put them forward. Thank you. Madam President, there is one caller in the queue at this time. I will put them through now. Caller number four, your three minutes begin now. Thank you. Peter Warfield, Executive Director, Library Users Association, Library Users 2004 at yahoo.com, and PO Box 170544, San Francisco, California, 94117-0544. I've said this before, and I would ask you again not to adjourn until you insist that future agenda items have an item near or at the end of the uh, near nearer at the agenda that provides for your opportunity to suggest items that you would like to see on future agendas. So, for example, today there were a number of such cases. Commissioner Mall said she was concerned about only six rooms having out of 28 having air conditioning. Urge is keeping at it. Well, what is the plan? Even if there's no particular plan now, it needs to be spelled out. And what is it that is desired and wanted? And what would it cost to uh, improve that, particularly since we're talking about the library being a respite center? Uh, Commissioner Ono mentioned 420. It's one reason why I'm not at the actual location of the main library tonight, because the huge party was... Um, let's just say, combining with Muni to make uh, impossible delays. But it's also a kind of a cultural and historical uh, local thing, though not just strictly limited to local, but certainly big here. And I'd love to see the library do some programming with respect to that as part of our history, as part of our culture, uh, and perhaps more things like that that are significant for San Francisco in terms of historical anniversaries and events and so on and so forth. Um, when Commissioner Mall said, does the library have meetings? Apparently, we weren't sure. But what seemed to be sure was there's a six-month limit on repeat uh, uh, reservations. And certainly, uh, that should be something that 
is something to be considered in future. What is the reason that there is that limit? Is it necessary and is it useful for the public? I think that would be a useful thing to discuss as a matter of what should be the library's policy and should it change and what would be the benefits and so on and so forth. So those are some examples just tonight of things that have come up that I think would be useful for having in future agendas. And thank you to the commissioners who have raised these questions and asked questions in general and been alert and uh, participatory here. Thanks very much. Madam President, there are no uh, additional callers in the queue at this time. Next platform, we're here and correct. Public comment is now closed. And so um, I turn this over to the commission and if someone would like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I would like to move to adjourn the meeting. Commissioner Lopez, a second from? I second. Commissioner Huang. So we have a motion from Commissioner Lopez and a second from Commissioner Huang to adjourn the meeting. And I'll take the roll call. Commissioners, please, please say aye or no when I call your name. President Wolf? Aye. Vice President Wong? Aye. Commissioner Mall? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Oh, Commissioner Bolander? Aye. The um, motion passes unanimously. No, sorry. Oh. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Take that back. Now I can say the a motion passes unanimously. The um, our April twentieth um, commission meeting is now adjourned, and we'll look forward to seeing you all in May. Thank you again for all of your um, efforts, and especially to the IT team. Thank you so much.